August 3rd already. The time is just flying by. We're less than a month away from the next 9-11 anniversary. So, um, well, we have a schedule change coming up. My next show normally have been on the 17th, but I'm trading with another individual, and I'll have the show just before 9-11 um, and right after 9-11. Well, actually, uh, I guess my next show will be the 17th. The, the changes will be in September because um, I'll have both Saturdays bracketing 9-11. But in the meantime, uh, last week we showed a, uh, uh, a video called Rethink 9-11, and it fouled up about halfway through. So we're going to play it again, and uh, then we're going to get down to the current events. Things are really happening quickly. We're going to talk about the crimes of the NSA. We're going to talk about how uh, we have a total criminal takeover of our government and they're planning all kinds of bad things including re-education camps, uh, purges, all sorts of stuff. Now Alex Jones uh, and Infowars.com 
have been holding a contest called the Paul Revere Contest. It's a video contest and the number one prize was $100,000. They just announced a winner and I'm going to play the winning video. It's called Purge and it's just like they say on Dragnet, only the names were changed to protect the innocent, but the story you're about to see is true. Okay, so we'll get to that a little bit later in the show and we'll open up the phone lines. But in the meantime, we're going to play Rethink 9-11. So take it away, control room. Do you know a third tower fell on 9-11? At approximately 5.20 p.m. on September 11, 2001, World Trade Center Building 7 collapsed in 6.5 seconds due to normal office fires, according to the government reports. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. It did not collapse from explosives or from fuel oil fires. In 2008, the government admitted that World Trade Center 7 collapsed at freefall for over 100 feet. This admission brings with it some serious implications that have yet to be addressed. If this sounds a bit odd to you, you're not alone. Polls show that 30% of U.S. citizens still have questions about the official 9-11 hypothesis. Rethink 9-11 is a rapidly growing coalition of more than 50 organizations from around the world, including well-respected organizations of scientists, technical experts, peace activists, religious persons, veterans, and surviving family members of 9-11 victims. All of these groups are coming together in an unprecedented global outreach campaign, in a collective commitment to raise worldwide awareness and support for a transparent and independent investigation into the destruction of all three World Trade Center skyscrapers on 9-11. A comprehensive investigation is needed to address irrefutable scientific facts and evidence which simply cannot be ignored. Here's Rethink 9-11's ad that will be seen around the world Throughout the month of September, you'll see Rethink 9-11 on subways, billboards, and sides of buses, on bumper stickers, t-shirts, lawn signs, and freeway overpasses, on library bulletin boards, on storefronts, and all over Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Rethink 9-11 is ready to facilitate renewed and growing interest in this highly relevant issue by drawing attention to that lesser-known third tower, a 47-story skyscraper, which was not hit by an airplane but collapsed completely from top to bottom on 9-11. World Trade Center Building 7 has been a starting point for many and will be the initial focal point of Rethink 9-11's campaign to be followed by additional significant facts and points of evidence regarding the total destruction of all three World Trade Center skyscrapers on 9-11. The campaign will empower people worldwide in a way that allows each and every person to participate at any level. We strongly support the Rethink 9-11 initiative because we are opposed to crime. And because we believe that our civilization is doomed unless we confront the unanswered questions of 9-11. Rethink 9-11! Together, we can, at last, bring widespread public attention to this vital issue. It's simple. Go to Rethink911.org right now and donate to your city. Share this ambitious campaign with everyone you know, and together, let's change the course of history. Remembering 9-11 is not enough. Rethink911.org. The evidence might surprise you. Okay, that's the, that's the campaign that's going on all over the major cities in, in the United States. They're putting up 50-foot tall billboards with that. Uh, now, see, we've got a problem. It's been over 10 years since 9-11, and there are a lot of people who are only 8, 9, 10 years old when 9-11 happened, or even maybe not born yet, and they grew up completely saturated in the propaganda, the, the official story. And they're just beginning to wake up and become aware that there's another part of the story. So I think I'm going to start over at the beginning next show and kind of cover the basics again so we can bring some of the new people up to speed. Um, in the meantime, we've got a, a real, real problem with uh, the criminal element taking over our government. It's a coup d'etat that you could arguably say started in 1970. That's when they supposedly started planning for 9-11. Uh, but we definitely had an acceleration of the coup d'etat plan in the year 2000 when they engineered putting Bush in. 
And it wasn't so much Bush that mattered, it was Dick Cheney and the entire uh, PNAC gang, the program for a new American century, the ones that are uh, criminally responsible for setting up this anti-constitution government that we have, where we can kill anybody in the world, we can do virtually anything we want, and then we're now turning inward on our own citizens. We've got documentation, military training manuals, FEMA training manuals, where they call for re-education camps for political dissidents. We're talking about American citizens. This is not imagination. This is not speculation. This is not a conspiracy theory. And while we're talking about conspiracy theories, a pejorative that's often thrown at us for suggesting that there might be a cabal in, in motion against us, we're not conspiracy theorists. We're conspiracy analysts. The conspiracy is real. We're just looking at it. In fact, a better thing, a more accurate and more fair description of what the 9-11 truthers are would be historians. So from now on, we're 9-11 historians. Some of you people that believe the official story are choking on that idea, but you know what? Every bit of the evidence that's ever been uncovered since 9-11 has supported the 9-11 truth movement, and none of it, not even one bit of evidence, supports the official story. Contrary to the lies you'll see on websites and the trolls that visit around and make asinine statements and foolish comments using fake science and whatnot, it's it's ridiculous. Well, we're going to start talking about the crimes of the NSA, and we've got a video to roll in here from James Corbett. So. Well, there's been new developments in the crimes committed by the NSA. That's right. This is not a story about Edward Snowden or where he's going. Okay, I, I got that wrong. We're going to start it over again. This is from Infowars.com, as you probably know. James Corbett has another video that we'll be watching later. So I just wanted to correct that before we got going. So now we'll go to that Infowars Crimes of the NSA. Well, there's been new developments in the crimes committed by the NSA. That's right. This is not a story about Edward Snowden or where he's going or who's going, where he's going to stay. This is about the crimes committed by the NSA. And some people at the Black Hat Conference understand that. Our nation takes stopping terrorism as one of the most important things. Freedom! Exactly. No, I'm saying I don't trust you. You lied to Congress. Why, why would we believe you're not lying to us right now? Read the Constitution. I have. Well, General Alexander has read the Constitution. He just doesn't care what it says. And when he says this is about freedom, he's lying about that as well, just as he lied to Congress. Now, the Black Hat Conference is a place where both hackers and the government go and show each other how to exploit systems because, of course, the government wants to know how to do that themselves. And, of course, there's a legitimate reason for looking at how people break in so you can protect against it. But as Aaron Schwartz has pointed out, the feds fund most of the exploits. The federal government is the biggest creator of malware, and then they use that to scare us into strangling the Internet and taking away our Internet freedoms. Now, there was another hacker that everybody expected to be presenting there, uh, Barnaby Jack, and he has in past years shown some remarkable things at Black Hat. He was going to talk about how easy it is to hack into medical devices and to even kill people. But of course, that's a multi-billion dollar industry, medical devices, and it would not serve a lot of people's interest to have that information get out. He died just before the conference under mysterious circumstances. Now, the mainstream media will cover the story, story of Edward Snowden, and they'll kind of turn it into a Where's Waldo type of story, but it's about a lot more than that. Snowden's father calls out Obama on Nuremberg crimes. 
This is written by Bruce Fine and Snowden's father, and it says, These, I protest, are not mere second-class rights, but belong in the category of indispensable freedoms. Among deprivations of rights, none is so effective in cowing a population, crushing the spirit of the individual, and putting terror in every heart. Uncontrolled search and seizure is one of the first and most effective weapons in the arsenal of every arbitrary government. That's what's going on, folks. This is how tyrants work, and this is why it is expressly forbidden in the Constitution, in the Fourth Amendment, and others. The types of things that we're seeing on a daily basis in many, many areas, but especially with this NSA story, with the dragnet that they're doing. They have to go before a judge and explain the reason why they are going to search someone, or search someone's things, or their papers, or their personal property, or their writings. That has to be put before a judge, and a judge has to agree. But instead, they have done that to every American citizen. And it doesn't matter what degree they have done it to. They've done it. It breaks the law. Now, the same people that broke the law are now asking that Edward Snowden be extradited out of Russia. And Russia says that they're, they've rejected out of hand Holder's extradition request for Snowden. And this is not just a partisan thing. This is something that former leaders of both parties have come out in opposition to this. Former President Jimmy Carter says, America now has no functioning democracy. And on the GOP side, former Senator Gordon Humphrey from New Hampshire wrote a very eloquent piece to, uh, to Snowden himself and to the uh, Guardian, which reported it. He said, I object to the monumentally disproportionate campaign being waged by the US government against Edward Snowden while no effort is being made to identify, remove from office, and bring to justice those officials who have abused power seriously and repeatedly violating the Constitution of the U.S. and the rights of millions of unsuspecting citizens. Well, the officials who are abusing power and ignoring the Constitution includes Eric Holder and Obama, because if they do not bring to justice those who commit crimes at the NSA and the CIA, they are then complicit in those crimes. They are then accessories to those crimes. So this is, these are the leaders of the previous generation of politicians talking about how America is turning into a banana boat republic. This is, uh, it, it's incredible what, what we're seeing here in terms of, the, of ignoring the Constitution and breaking the law and allowing that to happen. That's not, they're not even concerned with that. They just want to make this about shutting down whistleblowers who are going to explode, expose further criminal activity from them. Now we have a quote here from Henry David Thoreau. He says, disobedience is the true foundation of liberty. The obedient must be slaves. Well, Thoreau was heavily quoted in that letter written by Bruce Fine to Obama and to Eric Holder. Now, coming up after the break, we have an interview with the grand prize winner from Operation Paul Revere, the $100,000 prize winner. So stay tuned. We want to hear all about his film and how he made it and why. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together. All right. Hey. I had to stop it right there because it was going into the commercial, so we're not supposed to show commercials. Sorry about that. Um, basically, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to switch computers so I can adjust the one we were just playing. And uh, here's another InfoWars nightly news piece uh, talking about foreign aid for Al-Qaeda. As you're aware, or maybe you're not aware, but Obama is now the official worldwide leader of Al-Qaeda. And if you don't understand what I mean by that, you haven't been paying attention. But we're going to talk about, we're going to be arming the rebels in Syria who are now members of Al-Qaeda. And it, the same people that we blamed for 9-11 are in Syria. And we're going to, we've already given them stingers at Benghazi, and that's why the uh, assassination of the... Uh, ambassador took place on Obama's orders. Um, they didn't want to have any witnesses 
to the fact that we gave al-Qaeda stinger missiles at Benghazi. They wanted to be able to say, oh, they just recovered those missiles from where we accidentally forgot to, to bring them with us. You know, okay, so, well, anyway, let's go on and t check out this foreign aid for al-Qaeda. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, August the 1st, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, the Pentagon is giving Al-Qaeda contracts in Afghanistan. Putin refuses Eric Holder's extradition request for Snowden. And InfoWars Nightly News has a chance to talk to the winner of the Operation Paul Revere contest. All this and more tonight on InfoWars Nightly News. Well, do you remember when Rachel Maddow ridiculed Alex Jones for pointing out the connections between the U.S. government and Al-Qaeda? You saw them stage Fast and Furious. Folks, they staged Aurora. They staged Sandy Hook. The evidence is just overwhelming. He also says the evidence is overwhelming that President Obama is now personally the global head of Al-Qaeda. See, folks, the evidence is just overwhelming. Do I have to spell it out for you? Are you blind? Well, no one is more blind than those who refuse to see. Now, this is a story from Prison Planet. But this is also a story from Bloomberg. And this is, Bloomberg is not known to be a uh, small government advocacy outlet. So this is what Bloomberg reported. I am deeply troubled that the U.S. military can pursue, attack, and even kill terrorists and their supporters, but that some of the U.S. government believe we cannot prevent these same people from receiving a government contract. Now that is a quote from Joe Sopko, Special Inspector General for Afghanistan reconstruction. So we have Bloomberg quoting an inspector general of the U.S. government saying, even though these people are terrorists, we can't stop them from getting a government contract. And he goes on to say, they may be enemies of the U United States, but that's not enough to keep them from getting government contracts. He said, while the Obama administration is funding, equipping, and training al-Qaeda extremists in Syria to overthrow the Assad government, it is also awarding contracts to al-Qaeda after a decade-plus long war against the quote-unquote terrorists in Afghanistan. Well, this is nothing new. Rachel Maddow can read this in the headlines today. She could have read it in the headlines a long time ago. The government created al-Qaeda to fight the Russians in Afghanistan. Bin Laden and Anwar al-Awlaki were CIA assets, and they continue to fund them, as well as run a massive drug war operation out of Afghanistan. It has been pointed out in the past by other news outlets, although we re reported it here as well, that... Uh, Worldwide poppy production out of Afghanistan was only 10% of the worldwide poppy production, and now it has risen to over 90% after the U.S. military went there to assist them in doing that function. So it's a part of the drug war story as well. But now the real aid to al-Qaeda is going to happen after we leave, perhaps. Big aid to them. Also reported from InfoWars, NATO leaves live munitions behind at abandoned Afghan Air Force bases. The U.S.-led military coalition in Afghanistan has agreed to do a better job of cleaning up deadly unexploded munitions from its bases and firing ranges as it closes them down after the U.N. accused the coalition of leaving dangerous explosives behind. So-called explosive remnants of war have emerged in the past few months as an increasing danger to civilians, in particular children. In the first half of the year, nearly 150 people were killed or injured when such munitions detonated. Well, right now, they're just talking about carelessly left behind unexploded ammunition. But we have seen, as the government has pulled out of one country after the other after their war, that they leave behind massive military bases filled with all kinds of equipment. And usually, after we leave a country, the people that we were there to fight usually take over. So, of course, that's going to be al-Qaeda, but then we <laughs> kind of put them in power to start with. But it's not just the wars that we know about. The Pentagon has secret wars. This is a story that was broken by the New American. It's Pentagon's secret wars, you don't even have a right to know. When asked by senators to identify the groups being fought, the Pentagon said it's a secret. 
If the organizations are infiltrated enough to be targeted with military force, why can't they be mentioned publicly? There's a countervailing, very important interest in the public knowing who the government is fighting against in its name. And that's a quote from Jack Goldsmith of Harvard University Law School. Now, another study done by another Harvard professor and by a professor from UCLA is titled, How Many Wars is the U.S. Fighting Today? And they estimate in their study that the U.S. government is fighting at least five, quote, unannounced and undeclared wars around the world. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Okay, I'm back again. Now, um, what we're trying to do is match up a bunch of personal equipment with our high-tech equipment, and it's just not working sometimes. But we'll have it all squared away sometime real soon now. Uh, this next video is from RT, Russia Today, another one of those sources that doesn't uh, try to protect American interests. People say, oh, it's propaganda. Well, when America is steeped in lies, telling the truth would seem like propaganda. And that's what's happening. You can check out the facts yourself, and they do verify. Well, this is an inter interesting story about how, well, the powers that be got caught again. They built a back door into SIM cards that are in millions of telephones, giving them unlimited access. So let's play that SIM card story from RT, Russia Today. The SIM Finally, card in your mobile um, phone may be leaving it wide open to hackers and surveillance they teams trying to access your the, data. The cards to 750 send SMS, million instance, phones are reportedly at risk. Uh, this is from an inbuilt in bug which allows any third party to steal the SIM's encryption key. Uh, the explanation needed here the with RT's and Anastasia Chorkina. Um, Turns out that as many as 750 million cell phones around the world should be carrying flawed SIM cards that could potentially leave their owners vulnerable to financial Fraud well and surveillance. Uh, now, surveillance SIM cards team. hold key user now, uh, data. Now, is known for his activity and has been generating vulnerabilities of the secure systems and then providing uh, companies with his findings However, so the they can fix these issues before criminal hackers lay their hands and carry out illegal transactions. And this was researched and announced by 31 year old ethical hacker and renowned German codebreaker Karsten Noll. After repeated attempts to hack into SIM cards over the last three years, he now says a shocking number of them can be hacked within minutes. Noel has discovered a way to essentially get complete control of an individual's phone by finding out the unique encryption key of each SIM card with just one hidden text message, allowing whoever breaks into the system to do whatever the user of the phone is able to do. And what this means is uh, if there is credit card information or PayPal data on that given cell phone being broken into, that information becomes accessible and could easily be used, often without the cell phone user realizing that this is being done before it's potentially too late. RT's video agency Rupley spoke exclusively with Karsten No, who described in more detail the threats that this could all lead to. The main short-term threat when criminals finally um, acquire this, this attack method is fraud. They will abuse the, the cards to send premium SMS, for instance. They could also steal banking tokens from them in countries where that is used. Looking at the midterm, there's also surveillance questions because the, the SIM cards do um, encrypt all the voice communications originating from a phone as well as data communication. So all of this could be uh, intercepted and then decoded by a well-equipped surveillance team. Now, uh, Noel is known for his activity in exploiting vulnerabilities of secure systems and then providing companies with his findings so they can fix these issues before criminal hackers lay their hands on these technical flaws. And he estimates that roughly a quarter of the total 3 billion SIM cards using the data encryption standard throughout the world could be impacted by this research that he's now conducted. It's important to note that there has been no pattern identifying exactly which SIM card manufacturers are more, vul more vulnerable than others, 
Uh, but the security expert says it will take hackers about six months to figure out how to do what he has done. And uh, him releasing this information now gives manufacturers enough time to catch up in uh, fixing this problem. Uh, the UN International Telecommunications Union has dubbed these latest revelations, quote, highly significant and is now in the process of notifying agencies in almost 200 countries. Okay. Well, I can just see the types of remarks we're going to have on YouTube about the professional way I'm running my show. Uh, yeah, I, I had several videos going at once on that time. and You saw me clear them out so you could understand what was going on. Well, okay. Uh, what we've got now is the winning entry for the Paul Revere video contest at Alex Jones at Infowars.com paid $100,000 as a prize. Uh, and we're going to watch it. Now, keep in mind, only the names have been changed to protect the innocent, but the story you're about to see is true. Okay? Everything that you hear in this story can be verified that there are documents showing that it's either done right now, done deal, or it's in the plans. So here we go. This is the winning entry called Purge. Enjoy. 17 minutes or so. I'll be back. You've all read the updates from the last two weeks. Now I'm here to tell you the time is critical. The Department of Homeland Security has determined that now is the time to implement action to suppress the activities of right-wing extremists. The economic and political environment in which these extremists thrive is becoming more volatile. It's apparent that the world has entered into a currency crisis and trade disputes that could actually lead to civil unrest and armed conflict. Now, these are environments in which our enemies, both foreign and domestic, thrive. We're not going to let that happen. It's no secret that the DHS recently purchased over two billion rounds of ammunition. We're going to continue to purchase ammunition to keep it off the open market. This prevents these extremists from getting ammunition in their hands. Additionally, we've purchased 7,000 assault weapons. These weapons will be issued to newly formed FEMA Youth Corps brigades. As we receive threat level assessments, these brigades will be deployed into combat areas using 2,700 war wagons that were specifically designed for this purpose. Now in the past, extremists were easy to identify. They were skinheads, KKK members, radical political ideologists. Well now it's becoming a little more difficult. This group includes anti-abortionists, pro-constitutionalists, believers in biblical end times, gun owners, and most importantly, military veterans. Excuse me, but uh, military veterans are not extremists. Pro-Constitution? Every American should be pro-Constitution. I mean, the Constitution is the written law of the land. We've all sworn an oath to protect it. And believers in the end times? That's like every Christian in America. That's millions and millions of people. And they're good people. Schreiben Sie die Idee Nummer und was Sie gesagt waren Sie noch im Raum. Now look, you may not think that these people are extremists, but we've been monitoring their activity. We've been looking at internet traffic, cell phone use, and financial transactions. All this information is being sent to the Threat Fusion Center. The Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, and other federal agencies have determined that these people pose a real threat. Now effective immediately, all DHS agents will be required to undergo firearms desensitivity training using these new targets. The elderly, children, pregnant women, gun owners, and especially military veterans will all be among the extremists that we're going to encounter. An additional asset that's been made available to DHS has been the use of drones. These drones will be outfitted for surveillance. 
But as threat levels increase and the need arises, they will be set up for military strikes. This is treason. Ich glaube, wir müssen das beschleunigen. Deutsch sprechen ist nicht deine Schuld maskieren. Ihre Haltung ist nicht geschätzt. Tun, was sie am besten können. Viele durch Bildung lernen, aber andere durch Erfahrung lernen. Es ist deine Beerdigung. Agent Stein, thank you for your time today. Please continue the evaluation in the next room. Amerikaner sind nicht so schwach, wie sie gerne zu glauben. You say that economic problems have already begun and that real wars and civil unrest would be the end result. Now, in the fog of war, who's to say who was violent first? I didn't say we were having economic problems. Yes, you did. You said that we're currently in a currency crisis and trade wars, and that would lead to real wars and civil unrest. I didn't say that. You said that. You started today saying... Okay, okay. We all know that this is caused by the extremists hoarding gold, silver, and food. And it's also because of their racism. What? Especially <laughs> military. Oh Agent Walker, next room. And what are you doing? Getting some real intelligence. Get out! Now, ladies and gentlemen, this does get more urgent. Our preparations for the purge have to be expedited. We received a request from the Federal Reserve that the Department of Treasury, with the assistance of DHS, be authorized to confiscate all gold and silver being held in safe deposit boxes in banks throughout the country. This has already begun. Furthermore, in order to disable cyber attacks, to alleviate a toxic derivative market, and to starve out our political adversaries, the federal government is prepared to heavily tax all 401ks, all savings accounts, all pensions, and all social security, especially those of military veterans. Now, a possible shutdown of the entire banking system may be required. Well, of course people are going to become violent. You're stealing their money. When my Aunt Gertrude finds out that you're going to yank her pension and cut off her Social Security, you're going to need all that ammo and all those tanks. Tortelli. How dare you do this to veterans who serve their country faithfully, only to be backstabbed by a bunch of ivory tower bureaucrats committing treason? Is that what you think this is, Agent Tortelli? Bureaucrats committing treason? You want to know treason? what this is? I'll tell you what this is. The DHS has become a Gestapo, the Nazi SS. Tortelli, next room. Now, your mission briefs contain profiles of the extremists in your sectors. Know them before the next evaluation. Hello? Hello, is this Roland McMahon? Yes, Roland. This is Agent Danielle Robbins of the Department of Homeland Security. I'm concerned about an operation the DHS is conducting, and I'm wondering if I can get some more information from you. Why does my gut tell me that I should just hang up right now? I understand. You know, the DHS is not exactly on my favorite list. I understand, and I'm on your side. Are you? Prove it. Sir. I've received orders to investigate alleged extremist activity in my sector. The DHS is planning to purge certain individuals in the near future, and I believe they're doing it illegally. You're on the list, and I want to get down to the bottom of this before it gets any worse. Let me buy you a beer somewhere so we can talk more about it. I'd like to hear your side of the story. Okay, but 
I don't think you're gonna like where this is going. I already don't like where this is. That's why I'm calling. But I wanna hear it directly from you. You know, I don't wanna get involved. Rolly, I have an Intel profile report on you a mile long. I know internet posts, phone conversations, bank transactions. They have you all figured out. So you're already involved. And I want to find out if you are who they say you are. And if not, if it's not as advertised, well, Agent Danielle Robbins is going to be barking fire here at the office. All right, but when we meet, you come alone. Sure. Yeah, I was part of the 1st Tank Battalion. Abrams, who rolled into Baghdad, Iraq 2003. We were the first boots on the ground. Uh, I didn't see much action until a couple weeks later, but yeah. Tell me more. I don't think we were in Iraq for weapons of mass destruction. I don't think we are in Afghanistan for terror. I don't think we went into Libya to free the people, and I don't think we're in Syria now helping anybody. And if we get into a war with Iran, I don't think it's going to end well for America. So, are you a Republican or a Democrat? And who did you vote for in the last election, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, neither. I will not vote for the lesser of two evils, and I will not be part of their system. Whose system? The Federal Reserve system. The Federal Reserve is a private company who has the power to issue our own currency. They're the real power brokers, the real shadow government. The Congress and President can't even question them. The politicians are just puppets in this game. The politicians give us the illusion as if we're free. The Federal Reserve is printing $85 billion a month through quantitative easing and giving it to themselves. It is total counterfeit. I mean, look at the Boston bombing. Look at that happened on the same day that the gold and silver market crashed. And all the big banks swooped in to grab all the money while everyone was busy watching the news of the bombing. They swooped in and bought gold and silver by the ton. And the reason that they want me purged is because I don't buy their lies. The real power brokers. So that is that their plan to get all the money? No, they all, they already have money. They want control. They want to bring about a new one world government, a one world currency, and a one world religion. They want to control everything. Okay. Can you play this all out for me? Just play it all out. It's going to start with a bank holiday. That's where they shut down all the banks. It's going to come like on a Friday afternoon. They're going to say that there's some cyber attack and then they'll reopen the banks after they've dealt with the cyber attack on Monday morning. In the meantime, martial law will begin and they'll start purging all veterans, all gun owners, all Christians, or anyone that they see as a threat. The Civil War is going to be bloody. They'll bring out the DHS, they'll bring out the FEMA youth soldiers, and then they're going to bring in foreign troops to help you. However, I doubt that they have briefed you that these foreign troops are going to turn on you. And then it's going to get real bloody. And in the end, the foreign troops is going to try to plunder the entire country. They've already been promised whatever they can plunder, they can have. Now, what they don't know is that the ruling elite are going to use robots to turn on them. And then when they're all dead, the ruling elite get it all. And anyone left is subject to the new world order. Oh, God. Yeah, we're going to need them. Is there any hope? If there is any hope, the American people have got to wake up. And the current police and military have got to stand down when they're given the order to fire upon Americans. Then they got to join the counter-revolution, us, who wants to return the United States of America back to a constitutional republic.
and then together we can fight the technocratic tyranny. They're still good people. We're going to need them. In a press statement from the chairman of the Federal Reserve, all banking activity will cease at 5 p.m. Eastern Time Friday afternoon. All banks will be closed throughout the weekend. ATMs will be shut down and all online financial transactions will be suspended. According to the Federal Reserve press statement, normal banking will resume at 8 a.m. Eastern Time Monday morning. In other news, at the military bases across the nation, troops are conducting emergency deployment readiness exercises in conjunction with the Department of Homeland Security and the other federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. Today, the National Council of Churches has made an urgent plea with all Christians, observe the scriptures, and obey the federal government's order to turn in all firearms by Monday. It is the civic duty of all Christians to be an example to the nation as peaceful, obedient citizens who quickly become part of the solution and do not cling to the problem. This is the most disturbing weekend I have ever experienced in this country. Let's go to the phones. Larry, you're on the air. Jack! Jack! Our pastor sold us out! What? I'm one of the deacons at our church, and I found out that our pastor was paid to snitch internalistic congregants he thinks is storing food and guns. Who does he think he is? He's a traitor! The DHS has been put on high alert in anticipation of imminent terrorist attacks from veterans and is urgently requesting information of sightings of any suspicious activity, such as stockpiling or transporting in mass, food, water, guns, ammunition, fuel, or any indication of home fortification. Again, if you see something suspicious, please contact the DHS immediately. A cash reward may be given. They're bringing down the hammer hard, folks. You must keep vigilant. Let's get back to the phones. Jody from Texas, you're on the air. Yeah, they're coming. I'm telling you, this is it. Yeah, I saw some people, they're just pulling right out of their houses. They're showing no mercy. This is it. This is a red alert. This is it, man. This is a red alert. You gotta let everyone know. This just in, the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security are warning American citizens not to listen to or distribute online conspiracy theories that claim foreign nationals are helping with the execution of purged U.S. citizens. Distribution of such information will result in fines and further Department of Justice action. Okay, uh, the phone lines are open, 503-288-4448. If you'd like to make any comments about what we've been showing you. Um, the second place winner of that contest was a real good one. It, it, like they said, it was a toss up, a coin flip over which one won. Uh, it's called Drone. And I highly recommend that you go to infowars.com forward slash Paul, Paul Revere. And you'll get to the winning videos. You can even watch all 600 of them if you want. They, I mean, the entries. But uh, Drone is, is one of those ones you sit there just kind of shocked afterwards and realize it's not science fiction. It's not science fiction. Well, 
you know, the Terminator Skynet attack of the uh, robots against humanity, uh, that's not as far-fetched as it seems. DARPA just announced that, uh, you know, they've, they've got a new generation of robots that are fast going to be replacing the uh, human element in the military. They, they predict that there won't be a need for, for uh, people to join the military after the year 2020. Uh, that's kind of a scary thing to think that we're actually going to have probe droids, the Imperial probe droid. Remember the Star Wars? That's, that's the type of thing that they're actually going to have. They're developing it right now. Uh, it's absolutely scary, and, and there's so much going on that it, none of it's being covered by the mainstream news. So if you aren't watching any of these so-called conspiracy sites, actually alternative news, uh, if you're not paying attention to the Drudge Report, drudgereport.com, the biggest source of news, it's the biggest website. They had almost 900 million viewers in July. That's in July. We're not talking about a year's total. I mean, that's one of the biggest websites around, and they constantly link to infowars.com for breaking news. And... Uh, Anyway, we, we have a caller, so what, what would you like to talk about, caller? We have a caller. <laughs> oh, I hear it. dial tone. They did. They... Well, or not a dial tone, whatever you call that annoying sound. Anyway, uh, there's so much going on. It, it, the, the assassination of the ambassador in Benghazi by, you know, on orders from Obama is one of the biggest stories of treachery. I mean, where is the outrage? Go back and look at the Church Commission tapes, uh, you know, the Nixon Watergate deal and look at the outrage that was expressed look at what sort of penalties were given for what would today you know a lot of people would just wave their hands and say so what well why are you concerned about that back then heads rolled figuratively okay let's try the caller again yes hi you just mentioned uh, i can barely hear you robots may be replacing our could you turn it up in the studio a little bit just hold on a second let him Go ahead, give me a little more volume on two, on aux two, from the from the phone. <laughs> okay, go ahead, caller, try it again. All right. So robots will be replacing soldiers. I heard the word soldiers. We're we're not doing very well on this. Uh, Oh, yeah, robots will be replacing soldiers. So we will have a lot of working mercenary and soldiers displaced. Yeah, as a matter of fact, there will be a big problem. And, and uh, already in the military training manuals, the, the Department of Homeland Security training manuals, they talk about their biggest threats are going to be returning veterans. The biggest yeah. threat to peace. Yeah. It turns out that they are trained in weapons. Off, I can right? see why they're worried. They're going to be pissed <laughs> off. And they got guns. Yeah, and they know how to use them, and they're trained in tactics and all that. I can see why, yeah. the, you know, the power structure uh, is really worried that they're going to be cracked down upon by, when the American people start deciding that we want to enforce the law, we want to obey the Constitution, and obeying the Constitution is not a terrorist act, no matter how many times they write it in their training manuals. Well, and what's, what's the opposite of Constitution? Uh, I don't know. What is the opposite of Constitution? Well, there's pro and con. Oh, yeah. So I guess it must be prostitution. Pro which I think is where we are now. Yeah. Well, 
we, we certainly can say that about the press. I, I like Gerald Salenti, the, the trend forecaster. That's another place you should be looking on the Internet. Uh, he calls them prestitutes. And he likes, yeah. he likes to quote from the toilet paper of record, the New York Times. Yeah, I think they picked the shit, shit up off the executive wash D.C. room floor. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're having a real problem. We're way over driving the input of our phone system, and so your voice is sounding funny. There's nothing you did wrong. Everything's okay on your end. <laughs> I know, dude. It's the CIA. Oh, child! Okay. <laughs> well, I hope you had a good time with that. But anyway, yeah, everything you were talking about is valid. And uh, they're, they're absolutely, yeah, we were talking about cover your behind. Uh, that's exactly what was, we, we witnessed in the Benghazi attacks. Remember, first they came out and they were talking about how, oh, that was just an, a, a spontaneous uprising in reaction to the anti-Muslim video made by somebody in America, whatever. Uh, you know, as if Muslims would do that. You know, they might get outraged and be insulted and all that, but they're not just going to start rioting after some... How did they even see the video? They didn't see the video. It was something that was talked about. On, I never saw the video, you know, and I lived in America. Well, anyway, the point is that uh, they, they want to keep fostering the idea that Muslims are our enemy. And, of course, the more bad stuff we do to them, it becomes a self-fulfilling prov prophecy. We actually have Muslims as our enemies now, and for good reason. I mean, we, with, without cause, we destroy their country. Without cause, we kill everybody in their wedding parties. Without cause, we torture them, and we even torture their children in front of their parents without cause. Okay, now that, that's what America stands for now. It's a shame, it's a shame. I love my country, but I'm ashamed of my government. You can, you can divide the two. Your government is not your country. It's supposed to be working for your country, and it's our duty to dissolve, uh, abolish, or change the government when it ceases to obey the laws that are supposed to be defining it. And it's absolutely amazing that they can call anybody that supports the law a terrorist. Well, from the point of view of the illegal people in the government, yeah, anybody that wants legality would be terrorizing them. That probably gives them terror, the idea that they might be prosecuted for their wrongdoing. And like we said on the last show, our government has been active all over the world trying to suppress any sort of prosecution of war crimes because they don't want to see the precedent established that would eventually result in tremendous prosecutions of our leaders for our war crimes. Remember, Obama has committed more war crimes than Bush, and everybody was up in arms about Bush, you know, and we were content to say, the neocons, what evil people. Well, how about the neoliberals? The neo-anybody seem to be following the same, and it doesn't seem to matter, liberal or conservative, there doesn't seem to be any division in their philosophies except trivial ones, but on foreign policy, well, see you next time. <laughs>